Right. Uh, today I will, s I will talk about a theorem uh, which is which is fundamental in many respects in all sorts of classical geometric subjects. Subjects. Between the virus that's the gitu bu arada. Yeah, well. I will, of course, present it as a, as a, as a lovely application of theorems of Menelaus and Seva, mainly Menelaus. There it is. There it is. So I will just call it a theorem. Uh, this is usually referred to as the uh, theorem of observe the blank Tezak Tezak uh, being Gerard Tezak French, well, what you might nowadays call polymath, mathemat mathematician, architect, so on and so forth, lived uh, mostly 17th century. Gerard Desarc. Well, the blank here is uh, to be filled with the, for the moment, mysterious adjective. The incomplete. Okay, I shall talk about in what sense and why I'm stating and proving a theorem which I call incomplete. And I would like to give a few directions as regards how this incompleteness can be eliminated. How do you? Uh, how do you how do you how do you make it better? How do you make it complete? The concept of completion in mathematics as a whole. I will I will I will I will I will talk about that. Okay. So <clears throat> the theorem is the theorem is okay. So let me give you a verbal uh, statement. Given triangles. So given triangles. So you take two triangles. In fact given triangles A, B, C, and A prime, C prime, A prime, B prime, C prime, uh, where I exclude the possibility of vertices, corresponding vertices, coinciding. So A and A prime should not co coincide. B and B prime should not coincide. C and C prime should not coincide. Well, I I, I, I make this condition because I want to talk about the lines A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime. <coughs> Given A, B, C, uh, let, let, well, this is an assumption too, let uh, B, C and B prime, C prime, okay, so the two sides of the triangles, and uh, let me go on, C A and C prime A prime. And finally A B and uh, A prime B prime intersect. So I'm assuming that they do intersect. And uh, the points X, Y, Z respectively. Respect. I shall now. I shall soon draw the diagram so that the situation will become clear. If they do that, the following happens. The following happens. In order. Okay. So in order. So here is the theorem. In order. For the points x, y, z to be collinear. 
So in order for them to lie on a single line, it is necessary and sufficient that uh, the lines A A prime, B B prime, C C prime are concurrent. Well, that should have been nice. That should have been nice. In order for three points to be called in air, three lines to be concurrent, that should be necessary and sufficient. But that's not the case. Or concurrent or parallel. Well, this is in accordance with <coughs> this is this is as I promised in my earlier lectures that the expression concurrent or parallel will be a recurring theme. It will be a light motive in this course. So we shall encounter it again and again. And as it happens, we have done it again. So let me, let me, let me, let me draw a picture. Let me give you the picture. And then I shall give you a brief proof. I shall give you a sketch to proof, in fact. And, and the proof will be just an application of the theorem of Menelaus. Here it is. So, uh, okay, so, so you have got uh, two triangles, and uh, you join the vertices, and the lines will be, you will expect to intersect in a point, or perhaps not. Okay, so, so let me get rid of this part for the moment. Okay, so one triangle is perhaps something like this. Okay, so that's your triangle A, let's say, B, and C, right? And the other triangle is perhaps something rather like this. B prime, C prime, A prime, okay, and B, C. So we extend, okay, so the theorem says that let B, C and B prime, C prime intersect B, C and B prime, C prime, B, C and B prime and C prime. Well, where is that? Yeah, B, C and B prime, C prime intersect in, okay, X. <coughs> Okay, so we get that. So that's your point X. And then CA, CA, and C prime, A prime intersect in Y. So we get that too. And finally, AB and A prime, B prime intersect in Z. So I've got the three points, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so X, Y, and Z. Well, in order for, uh, <coughs> the theorem simply says that in order for these three points, X, Y, so let me do it like this, X, Y, and Z to lie on the same line, it's necessary and sufficient that, that, B, B prime, A, A prime, C, C prime should be concurrent or possibly, or possibly, or possibly they should be parallel. The three lines should be parallel to one another. Now, that is, okay, so we have already mentioned this kind of situation. And uh, with that kind of, with that kind of concurrent or parallel situation, it makes sense, it makes sense to consider parallel lines as <coughs> to consider parallel lines as intersecting at an ideal point at infinity, this is going to be uh, this is this is this is big deal. This is big deal. I shall make so so. If you like, perhaps you might like to 
you might like to see the triangles. Okay. I shall give you, I shall give you a proof. Okay, so let me let me also indicate the situation where where perhaps you might like to see how a a prime b b prime c c prime may be parallel. But well, that's not too difficult, you see. So so something like this is happening. So like this, perhaps. Okay, so that's your. That's your BC. Uh, that's your B prime C prime, perhaps. They intersect in X. Okay, and they have got, of course, that's that's the other triangle. Okay, so that's your A. That's your B. That's your C. CA. Okay, so let's perhaps take. Okay, so that's my that's my A prime. That's my B prime, that's my C prime. So A prime, C prime, and C A intersect in, so this was X, so this was, this is Y, okay, and, and A B, and A prime, B prime intersect in Z, so let me, let me, according, let me use a bit of color, so that is, yeah, there we are. Okay, so that's your Z. Fine. <coughs> Z, Y, X. So, well, that's what, what can happen. So, okay, so let's say this picture represents the situation where the three lines in question meet <coughs> in omega, whereas in this case, A, A prime, B, B, C prime, C, C prime, do not intersect at all, or you might like to, if, if you have got, if you're the, that kind of person, you may imagine this omega has vanished off to infinity in this rough direction. Okay, so, <laughs> so let's, let's do that. I will, I will, I will try, okay, so I will, okay, so the proof, the proof. I will do the proof as follows, the proof as follows, part one. So I will, I will prove that. Uh, so concurrent or parallel. So so if uh, either this picture emerges, just to say A A prime B B prime C C prime are concurrent in some point omega, or A A prime B B prime C C prime are parallel. If I make one of these assumptions, this will entail. I will show that this will entail that the points x, y, and z, x, y, z, are collinear. Okay, so, so this, of course, is about uh, a, a prime, b, b prime, c, c prime. If a, a prime, b, b prime. Okay, so I will do this, do it in this direction, first of all. <coughs> well, so let's assume that, let's, let's take the concurrent case. So let's assume that they are concurrent. Well, if they are concurrent, you see, you see that's not too difficult to see. Then, for instance, you can, uh, yeah, so, yeah, okay, yeah. Let's use Menelaus, employ Menelaus, theorem of Menelaus. Uh, to obtain information in the triangle, in the triangle, let's say, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Start with omega BC. Okay, I want you to have a look at this triangle omega BC. Show it a button. Let's have a look at this. And the straight line B prime C prime. Okay, so let's use omega BC. And the, and, the, and, the, and, and the straight line B prime C prime. Now what does it tell me if I use the theorem of Menelaus? Well, I guess I can start with X, that being on the side BC. So XB by XC, XB by XC 
times, well, xb times xb, well, the straight line b prime c prime intersects the side omega c and c prime. So c prime c, c prime omega, And finally, of course, the same line intersects omega b in b prime. So that I can, uh, what, I, what I have to write is b prime omega b prime b. Well, this is b prime b. This, these three things multiply out to give you plus one. Shem <coughs> that. I have chosen, I've chosen my notation carefully so I can go on in cyclic fashion. So in, in the triangle omega C A, using the C prime A prime line C prime A prime, I can simply obtain, well if you like, I mean, if you don't believe me, okay so omega C A, so it is, it contains still this, the line C A, one side C A contains the point Y, so let me start with that, so Y so. Well, all you have to do is just to move everything around by one, yc over ya times a prime a divided. I mean, if you don't believe me, you can, you, can, you can check carefully, but I have chosen my notation very carefully in a cyclic fashion so, so that there is no doubt in my mind as to the validity of the equations. I write blindfold. And thirdly, use omega AB, to use the triangle omega AB, and the, and the line <coughs> A prime, B prime, to obtain, well, there it is, Z, C, Z, B, oh, I'm sorry, move C into A, A into B, okay, times A into B, B prime. Well, that is, I think, a very good point to point out the virtues of choosing your notation carefully in doing classical geometry. Okay, so there we are. This is equal to plus one again, right. So if we multiply these three, these three equations out, so if you multiply them, let's see what happens exactly. So you've got, so you've got this, these three quantities, which are going to be of <coughs> importance, surely, surely. But what about the rest? For instance, B prime B, B prime B cancel out. B prime omega, B prime omega cancel out. So these two cancel out. So A prime omega, A prime A, well these two cancel out, these two cancel out. So you are left with, you are left with the fact that, so, so these three give you simply that XB, so that's the, that's, that's really the required equation. That's, that's all that there is to it. YC over Y. A, Z A over Z B. Well, that is equal to plus one. Now, what can I do with this? Well, what I can do with it is quite simple. All I have to do is just to notice that this entails X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, collinear, collinear. It's, it just entails the collinearity of X, Y, Z. How? By just using Menelaus, 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 in the triangle ABC, that's it. This is, I take once again, once again, I take this opportunity to point out how the theorem of Menelaus should be kept flexible so that it can be used both ways. So you can go from the numerical relation, so you can go from collinearities to the numerical relations, and you should be able to go back from the numerical relation to the geometric, to, to its, its statements of geometric portent. Okay, so this tells us that, this tells us that if the, the straight lines A, A prime, B, A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime are in fact concurrent, then X, Y, Z lie on a straight line. Great. <coughs> okay, so what happens if, if they're parallel? If they are parallel, well, the situation is not much different, really. Let me use a bit of color to, to brighten things up. You know, I think it must be terrible to listen to a lecture 
by a teacher who is uh, who is an evident who is who is who, is, who evidently has a terrible cold in the head. So let me so make things livelier by using a little color. So, uh, well, in this case too, in this case too, well, what you can do is actually, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so in this case too, you would like to make use of the theorem of Menelaus in the triangle ABC in the final analysis, let's say. So how are you going to do, what can you do about XB by XC? Uh, <coughs> the unfortunate thing is that, the unfortunate thing is that, as in the first case, you don't have, for instance, omega BC triangle. This omega has gone off to infinity, but that can be remedied, that can be remedied easily. You see, you see, the ratio XB to XC, XB to XC, is in fact is in fact exactly exactly uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, yeah I mean uh, uh, okay exactly actually so theorem of Thales so these are parallel so xp to xc is in fact exactly the length BB prime to CC prime. Okay, so that's 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 no difficulty. BB prime to CC prime. Well, of course, the li the lines BB prime CC prime being uh, parallel. This sort of thing makes sense. We have talked about this. Uh, of course, you've got similarly YC over YA. Theorem of Thales again. YC YA. Well, in that case, you've got you've got. <laughs> Obviously, CC prime, AA prime, well, ZA, ZB, well, AA prime. I, I'm not even looking at the picture but because it's, it's quite evident. So, if you multiply them all out, multiply them all out, you get, again, the same thing. XB, XC, YC, YA, ZA, ZB is obviously plus one. So once again, apply the theorem of Menelaus with the triangle ABC and of course uh, with respect to the points X, Y, and Z to see that <coughs> X, Y, Z are in fact collinear. Right. So we have, we have found the following. If A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime are concurrent in fact, or if they are parallel, let's say they are concurrent at infinity. In both cases, you must have x, y, z lying on a single line. So we have established this. This is done. So concurrent or parallel gives rise x, y, z to collinear. So how about going backwards? Now, you are all bracing yourselves up to yet another gigantic arguments, inequality, equalities, man allows backwards, forwards, etc. Well, not quite, not quite. So how do we, okay, so, so conversely, conversely, it's not actually that bad, conversely. So I would like to, I would like to show that, I would like to show that if x, y, z are collinear, Okay, so I don't know this. Şimdi hanımlar beyler, actually the, 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 this, the solution is, is, rather, is rather simple. Şimdi uh, bakın, okay. Uh, now, I need, I need a little yellow. Don't I have any yellow? No, I don't. Okay, so I'll take some blue. Uh, right. Şimdiler. Okay, so there are two possibilities. Okay, so so let's assume that these these are in fact okay. So so I, I'm assuming that these are in fact on a line. X, Y, Z are parallel. But I don't know whether these things are concurrent or whether or where. 
da parallel. I don't know. Right. Şimdi, so there are two possibilities. Either, either uh, you have got a a prime, b b prime, c c prime. They're all parallel. Well, in this case, uh, well, there is nothing to prove. Nothing to prove. So that's exactly what I'm trying to prove. If not, or, Yeah, I have got three lines and they're not all parallel. So it means that, it means that, in fact, at least two of them must intersect in a point. Which one? <coughs> So, three lines, and they intersect. They're not like this. They intersect. Which one? I mean, shall I take B, B prime, C, C prime intersect, or, or the other? Well, it really doesn't matter. Let me assume, let me assume that, let me assume that B, B prime and C, C prime intersect in some point lambda, okay? Or... So without loss of generality, I don't, I don't care which pair I take, without loss of generality, without loss of generality, uh, B, B prime, C, C prime intersect in lambda. Now I will show, now I will show that A A prime also goes through the same point. Şimdi ispat çok The proof is very simple. I invite you now to change your point of view and to look at not these two triangles, but these triangles. Can you manage that? I want you to look at the triangle B that B prime. Okay, and I want you to look at the triangle C, Y, C prime. Huh? So I want you to apply the first part of this arc theorem, not this way, but this way. Do you see BC and ZY and B prime C prime intersect in the point X? So if I let the sides intersect two by two, well, BB prime and CC prime intersect in lambda. On the other hand, ZB and CY intersect in A. And finally, YC prime and ZB prime intersect in A prime. So it means that the points A prime, A and lambda, and lambda, they must all lie on the same line. You are finished. Finished, sir. Intersect in lambda, so apply the first part to triangles made it ZBB prime, ZBB prime, and YCC prime. to find that A, A prime, lambda are collinear. Okay, that finishes the proof. Okay, so that's theorem of Desarc. Theorem of Desarc. 
how can, why is it incomplete? Why is it incomplete? Well, you see, I, I can, I, I can uh, make it complete. Okay, so let's answer why is it incomplete. It is mostly incomplete because it has to make the following condition. It makes the condition that the sides of the triangles, so this triangle and this triangle, if you take the sides two by two, you force these sides intersect, it to intersect. So for instance, BC and B prime, C prime intersect in X by assumption. I assume that. You want CA and C prime, A prime intersect in Y. And finally, I want AB and A prime, B prime to intersect in Z. I assume them. So I assume really that X, Y, and Z are points in my Euclidean plane. What happens if I don't make this assumption? For instance, if I don't make the assumption that BC and B prime, C prime <coughs> intersect, what happens if they don't intersect? Well, in Euclidean geometry, for two distinct lines, there are two possibilities. Either they intersect or they don't, but the moment they don't intersect, they occupy a very special, special attitude to one another. They are parallel. So, for instance, if BC and B prime, C prime are parallel, you've got a picture like this. You've got a picture like this. So that's BC. And that's BC pro B prime, C prime. They don't intersect, they're parallel. So that's your B, that's your C, that's your B prime, that's your C prime. Well, let's assume that the rest, so let's say for instance, AC and uh, A prime, C prime, let's say, intersect in Y, AB and A prime, B prime intersect in Z, let's say. So I will obtain a picture very much like the one which I drew with the points Y and Z here, but X has gone away. X has just flown off into infinity. Okay, I want it, this is very important. I really wish you to visualize this. Shikhtar, I really want you to imagine this as a, as a moving picture in which I want you to make BC and B prime, C prime more and more parallel. I mean, so, so, so that, or, or let's say equivalently, it's, it was stupid thing to say. I want you to imagine this point X move steadily further and further away so that when x is very far away, what you see, b and c, b, c and b prime, c prime, appear to be parallel. And finally, when they are parallel, you can actually think of, you can actually think of a point at infinity, okay? <coughs> and uh, what, what, what do we mean when we say, so how, what are we, what sort of a statement? Am I going to replace the right-hand side? So, so uh, well, x, maybe, uh, yeah, for x, y, z to be, x, y, z are collinear. Okay, x, y, z, okay, so what is the statement now? Now that x has moved off to infinity, when x has moved off to infinity, what do I say about the points y and z? What you can say is the following that the line following y and z should in fact have exactly the same alignment as bc oh, shh, bc and b prime c prime so so what this entails is that is that the line yz yz is in fact parallel to bc and which is of course parallel to b prime c prime okay so that is for instance one thing, but this is not all, this is not all. So what happens, for instance, what happens, for instance, 
if, uh, well, if B, C are parallel, B prime, C prime are parallel, so that X has, is at infinity, not only that, but also C, A and C prime, A prime are parallel. Well, that will, that will give you yet another picture. That will give you yet another picture. So you see, you have to, you have to deal with, you have to deal with all these, okay, so B, C, so let's say something like, so you have to deal with all these, all these uh, special, special cases separately, which is a terrible thing, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the inferno of a mathematician. That's, mathematicians hate it, mathematicians hate it. So for instance, B, C, and B prime, C prime are parallel, so they don't intersect. In other words, in other words, your x is at infinity. <coughs> well, and then, and then you say that, not only that, but also C A and C prime, A prime are parallel. So that, so that, so that your y is also at infinity. Y is also at your, at infinity. Uh, well, uh, how about, how about, how about x then? Well, if you have got, if, if these three points are concurrent or parallel, then you don't know where A prime and B prime, so where is that? X has gone to infinity, Y has gone to infinity. And where is Z? X, Y, and Z must be on a line. Your X is away at infinity, your Y is away at infinity. They are both ideal points. And if you want to, if you want to preserve, preserve your lifeline, your lifeline is in geometry that through two distinct points, there is only one line. Okay, so if one point is at infinity and there is another point at infinity, the line containing them must be completely at infinity. So you must come to the conclusion that if x and y are at infinity, <coughs> so z must also be at infinity. So you must also come to the conclusion, in this case, you must come to the conclusion that not only, uh, not only, okay, you must come to the conclusion that, uh, neither, uh, okay, you must come to the conclusion that a, b and a prime, b, a, b, must be parallel to a prime b prime. Okay, so if, if C A is parallel, to, okay, so if your C A is parallel to C prime A prime, if your uh, B C is parallel to B prime C prime, then you must come to the conclusion that the third sides must be parallel to, well that is, that's a lot of trouble. That's a lot of trouble. I mean, in Euclidean geometry, in Euclidean geometry, if you are obsessed with this, and if you want to make incomplete into complete, then you just have to take many different special cases, particular cases. You must treat them all separately. You must all <coughs> formulate them within the language of Euclidean geometry. That's terrible for a mathematician. And for a mathematician, for a seasoned mathematician, for an experienced mathematician, this is a circumstance which is just screaming, screaming that I do not belong in this geometry. The kind of geometry I should live in should be a larger geometry. Okay, and that is trajectory. Okay, so I want to cut short now. I'm not, I don't want to talk too long about this, but this is my introduction to what's called projective geometry. Projective geometry, the idea is very simple, original idea. You take our ordinary plane, and to that plane, you add at each direction one point at infinity, ideal point at infinity. And uh, you say that, so, so there are many points. And you say that all those points at infinity constitute a single line. Call it horizon or the line at infinity. And then you have got the following situation. 
Whenever you take two lines, they must intersect. Why? Because either they are, they are the usual lines, which we have, and then they intersect, intersecting lines, or they are lines which look in our geometry like parallel lines, but then they intersect at infinity. Okay, so this is a, this is a, this is a very great idea, and this is a very prototypical, prototypical circumstance in which a mathematical object, which, which, which uh, proves itself to be too small, too small to express a theorem, is extended into something larger. Yet, making things larger, they come, of course, with a penalty. What exactly that penalty is, I shall explain later. That, okay, so let me, let me tell you. In this larger geometry, we can talk about lines, we can talk about points, we can talk about how points intersect in lines and how two points determine a single line. That's all very well. So the theorem of Desart will say, now, in projective geometry, I am at home. Yet, in projective geometry, you can't, for instance, talk about angles. You can't talk about perpendiculars. You can't talk about the ratio in which a point divides a line segment. In particular, you can't talk about midpoints. So many things go lost. Yet, there is this extraordinary uniformity which is gained. So it's, it's a paradise, it's a doubtful paradise, okay? So it's suspicious uh, whether it's a good idea to live there or not. So, you know, like all, like all human beings, we would like to have our cake and eat it, okay? You want to have it, you want to eat it and you want to have it in your hand, okay? So you would like to go to a place where Desarc, Desarc theorem has a simple statement and simple proof it's obviously projective geometry, but then in projective geometry, you would like to keep those things which you have obtained in Euclidean geometry. Can it be done? Yes, it can be done. It's slightly beyond the scope of this course, but I shall give a few indications. This is the, this is the work of great German mathematician Felix Klein, but about him later. Let's stop here.